people are lost, the people are hurt, and he wants to glorify God, and he wants to bring people. And that's just such a humbling thing to know that, you know, he's come to this town to praise the name of God. And it's just such an amazing thing. The Bible says they ask for see. See, here's where we make mistakes in today's world. And we're making the biggest mistake. We're blind and allowing ourselves to not accept the fact that there is good and bad in this world. The good comes from righteousness of God. The bad comes from Satan. The Bible says he came to kill, steal, destroy. I push that, push that, push that. Why? Because the manipulation that started in the beginning of time that has slowly escalated from thinking it was wrong just to put roll your pants up and roll your sleeves up is turning into people walking down the street with their pants hanging down on their knees and their shirt off and Miley Cyrus on TV with their tongue hanging out and their underwear on, slamming around on a wrecking ball with no shirt. That is the work of the devil that has got our children getting on national television. And living that life of sin. Our TV actually has her topless, but she's covering part of her chest. Just part of her chest. That is okay in today's society. That is not, that is the work of the enemy. That is the work of the enemy trying to destroy and kill, destroy and kill us. And how are we allowing it to take place? See, here's the thing that we have to be worried about with this ministry if we pursue it. And as the next few weeks, I go at it as hard as I can. I'm going at this ministry hard. And I need my brothers and sisters to help me. Because we might be in a little bitty country town, but we are in the red light district of Pendleton County. And when you step out the doors onto those streets and go into the highways and byways and the worst places we can imagine, we're going into the red light district of Pendleton County. Now here's the thing. Each and every one of us in this room have sinned, and I have sinned. And most of my sin, and 90% of my sin, took place on these streets out there where I'm going out to minister. And see, when we live a life of sin, the enemy's got a control of us. He knows when we've hung out with sin our whole life, what our weak spots are and how to attack us through that sin to get us back into that spot. Because he, we've been hanging out with that enemy. We've been hanging out with that form of sin in that way of sin. And he knows our weaknesses more than anybody, even more than we know. If I hang out with you every day, you know what I'm good at. You know if I can play basketball, if I can shoot the three-pointer, or if I can play a layup. The enemy knows that my addiction is going to pull me back as it has in the past, or if I, I'm going to overcome that. He's going to know if it's a television addiction. He's going to know if it's a drug addiction. He's going to know if it's a porn or lust addiction, or whatever addiction it is that may try to drag me down. He's going to know what it is that he can use to bring me to my death because I've hung out with those demons before in my life, and they are very familiar with my life. And when I get out into this red light district, I'm going out to a world of evilness, of depression, where Satan has his hand upon this community in addictions of heroin, in addictions of drugs, and whatever else is out there. And I'm going out to hang out in an area with a bunch of demons I've hung out with before. And I need prayer. And those that go with me, he knows where you've been before because we've hung out with you in the past too. Bible says two or more gathers, then we can pray for that head. But remember, sometimes Satan gives head tremors. And the head tremors, he can't bust through God. Remember that joke? I said, Oh, a head. Give me some head tremors. That's the truth. He knows how to cut. He knows how to cut through our hedge of protection, our strength, because we've hung out with him before. But here's the thing when we get into the ring, and we start fighting with the enemy out there in the world. That's what we, us all night and say, well, the Bible gave me authority. And I, I'm going to teach his authority. The Bible gave me authority. I'll jump in that ring. I'll fight the devil. Here's the problem. If you jump into the ring with the devil, you're, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. Because here's what we don't realize. Think back to when Moses died. Think back to Michael. Okay, a lot of people gave him a lot of angels or archangels. I don't know. I know in the Bible only one time the word archangels ever used, and it's referring to Michael. It's the only time any angel was ever called an archangel. An archangel means a warrior. He's a warrior. He's a fighter, right? And Moses dies, and you remember this story, and he's laying there dead, and that demon comes in to try to take his body, right? And Michael comes to fight him. And he sits down and he realizes real quick that he did not fight Satan. He realizes really quick that Satan is overpowering. Well, here's the thing. Think about the power of angels. Think about the angels of how strong these angels really are. These are angels that rolled that stone away from 
the tomb that Christ rose from. That no man can move that stone, but these angels move that stone. Amen? Imagine the power of these angels. It's a seed part of it. It's a seed part of it. I shall say unto the Lord, for he is trying to glorious that the horse and rider thrown into the sea. Amen. You remember that song? Let my people go, man. And the angels soared over that sea, parted that sea, and they went through that sea. That's how strong angels are. Amen. But he couldn't have been saved. I heard T.D. Jake say one time in a video sermon. He said, and he actually referred to boxing. He said, don't get in the ring and fight Satan. That's what I'm talking about today. He said, because you're going to lose. He said, you can stand out there outside. Here's how he did it. If you knew T.J. he said that. He stood out there with the old Bible verses and told him, and wrote down, you know, I have authority over you. No weapon can come against you. We're going to go, 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 prosper. You know, you get nervous and you get shaky and scared. You back away from the ring and keep throwing. You get that kind of guy. But then you get the kind of guy that jumps in there. See, we're, we're, we're going into a world where we think that we got a mentality with this mystery. We've got to jump in there with this fight. But the bottom line is the Bible says the battle is not ours. It's already been defeated by God. We have to get the mentality we can't go face to face with that Lord's already done that for us. Remember that angel that tried to fight Satan knew he couldn't do it. He stepped back when we knew he said, by Jesus' name you're a Jew. And he claimed his body of Moses. It was by the power of Christ, or God, that he claimed that. He knew that the battle was won. He knew that God was the creator of heaven and earth. He knew that one day Jesus Christ would be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In our life, in our finances, in our work, in our struggles, in our family, if we're at the lowest of lows, we can stand firm in righteousness knowing that we have won the battle through Christ Jesus who died on that cross for our sin. The Spirit poured down the thing. Amen. For we are to walk in that image. Read my Bible and pray. I would say I don't care what they say about me. It's alright. Amen. It's alright. Because I will read my Bible and pray. I will follow you all my days. When you read that word, you know the battle's won. When you read that word, you know what righteousness is. When you pray to him and you've been into that throne room, and I'm telling you, you can look at somebody and know for a fact, right this second, you'll look right at them and know if they've never been to the throne room of God. You'll know if they've ever been to the outer courts. You'll know if they've passed through that case spiritually into that inner court. You'll look at them and you'll know if they've ever walked into the inner court, into the throne room, unto the veil that we no longer have to tie a rope to our leg to enter into, out of fear of death to the power that is Christ out of the cross for us, into the throne room of bowing down at the feet of Christ. We'll know by looking at ourselves and exploring our own. But when we realize that we have been to that spot, then we know the battle is won when we bow at the feet of Jesus Christ. We must bow at the feet of Christ. We must bow at the feet of Christ. That's the only way we will truly understand that the battle is won. Facing bankruptcy, you're dead. That the IRS said. You got this after you got the enemy trying to kill you through disease. You got sickness. We're just getting old. You got family sick. The battle's been won. It's all been washed away by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen.